The story of the atom is one of dead ends, perseverance and lucky guesses. By about 1850, scientists accepted that everything was made of atoms, and atoms were as small as it got. The word atom literally means uncuttable. If you could cut one open, you'd find it was the same all the way through. Trying to understand electricity led scientists to question this assumption. They knew electricity could travel through the air as sparks, but did you need the air? Around 1857, a German glassblower called Heinrich Geisler found that without much air, a high voltage could cause a glow. No one knew why. Different gases made different colours, and so Geissler tubes became popular decorations. An English scientist called William Crookes found that if you sucked out even more air, a high voltage just caused a glow at one end of a tube. Again, scientists disagreed about what caused it. It seemed that there were strange rays coming from the metal terminal on the negative side, or cathode. These cathode rays were blocked by thin metal and could even make a wheel turn. Light couldn't do this, so maybe they were particles of some kind. Crookes also found that they could be deflected by a magnet and the direction suggested that they had a negative charge. Negatively charged particles should have been deflected by electrically charged plates. The British scientist J.J. Thompson tried and continually failed to make them do this, which was a real problem for the particle theory. It caused an ongoing dispute between British and German scientists about whether these cathode rays were particles or a kind of light. In 1895, the French scientist Jean Perrin showed that if you deflected the beam onto two very thin sheets of gold leaf, then they became negatively charged and repelled each other. This led Thompson to try even harder to deflect the rays using charged plates, and eventually developed a pump that could remove almost all the air and see the deflection that he'd predicted. If all there is is atoms and empty space, then what were these particles? Were they some kind of charged atom? If the particles were smaller than even an atom, then what were they? By using an electric field to cancel out the effects of a magnetic field, Thompson managed to show that these charged particles were probably very, very tiny so they couldn't be atoms themselves, but must be a part of atoms. Thompson guessed an atom was like a plum pudding, with little plums of negatively charged particles embedded in a pudding of positive charge, so that overall the atom was neutral. These negatively charged particles came to be known as electrons.